of exercises. These questions are relatively easy. The only problem that they have is that they are phrased in a strange way. Okay, so I want that you read it, think about it, and try to check what are the key points to answer this question. So I gave you already the answer, one answer and the other answer. So from there, you can start thinking about it. Okay, so you can stop the video. If not, if you didn't stop it, I will start telling you the, the key points to answer this question. I'm going to answer it very quickly with a, not a lot of explanations. But if you have any doubt, you can stay in the video and then I will explain it much slower. Uh, here, they talk about number of chromosomes, that they, they are 12, but you don't need to use this number 12. But the number that here is key is that there are six. And the other key information here is that they are homologous, that they are heterozygous, sorry. Mm, they are not homozygous, they are heterozygous. And here, to answer this question, Something that is confusing is that they use the word combination here. This is not talking about permutation, combination, binomial theory. They are talking about types. Yeah, so how many types of centromeres? And they uh, are, can be producing meiosis. And the word centromeres here can be misleading. If you remember what is a centromere here. Centromere is here, this structure that in, in, in between the two arms of, the, uh, of a chromosome. However, this can be used also, if you remember, as allele. An allele is a section, a type of, um, one of the types of, um, of a gene that is located in a chromosome. For this purpose, that is just counting things they work in the same way yeah because you are counting if you have you will have one type that is the dominant or one type that is the recessive yeah so that question now if you, i ask you how many different com how many types how many different types of alleles can be produced in meiosis you can answer it in a second yeah and if i ask you what is the probability that a gamete will contain uh, an allele uh, designated with a capital letter is very easy, yeah? So, uh, so how many types do you have? Here, in the first question, you have two types, and so you apply them a uh, 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 type of uh, multiplication rule, and you just repeat six times that so you get 64 yeah so this is how you get it uh, and if you have if you have more doubts about that i can continue explaining that in more detail uh, later and here they are asking you about this so the probability here that you have of getting one of those types is 50%. You have 50% of getting uh, a gamete that is uh, recessive and 50% of getting one that is dominant. So 50% here, and you repeat that six times. Yeah, and this will give you the answer. Uh, here, the key of all of this is, remember, when you have a mono, uh, um, uh, Monohybrid cross making gametes, uh, the formation of gametes is simple. When you have a dihybrid, you have to start applying the foil, and you start getting something like this. And when you start, so here you have two options, yeah, two types, yeah, raised to the power of two. So this is how you get four. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting uh, a trihybrid cross definitely you start you start needing you need to start getting start looking for formulas because this start getting uh, is it, not simple to do it manually so you just have to use the multiplication rule for this kind of exercises just one thing that I want to remind you there are four type of tools that you can use to solve some of these genetic exercises 
in the book they talk about the multiplication rule these are when you have mutual exclusive events when you have or and or here you have independent events in the multiplication rule this is the correct one for the exercise that we are using and the followings that they are not that you need to use here is when you have dependent events you can go and rewatch that video lecture if you have any doubt and they can be an order and they can be ordered and you have here the binomial theory to do that but if you here if you remember you are just there is no change in the probabilities when you have the first gene then you, in the next one you will do exactly the same thing you have uh, you there is no interaction between genes so you're just repeating the same thing it's like flipping a coin every time yeah and you can do it with c so so this is why we use the multiplication rule in this we don't use these dependent events okay for this one uh, now i'm going to explain that in a slower way in case that you have any doubt okay so in case that you have a doubt about this i wanted to remind you that for me it's much easier to have diagrams so here i gave you one two three four five and six chromosomes yeah so they are asking you about these six chromosomes yeah that have these combinations i put the capital in green and the lower case the recessive in uh, in purple yeah and again they are asking you for the types the combinations and it's pretty easy okay so to do that i'm going to explain only one one gene and on is only only with one chromosome and only with i'm going to start when there is no variation okay so let's start with that so here you don't have any variation you have only two capital letters yeah so they're all dominant they go through meiosis and they produce one two three and four com uh, type of chromosomes but in this case all of them are the same no variation okay and I wonder you think what happened would you repeat this six times yeah so when you repeat this six times you will get the same there will be only one type of centromere all of them all of the gametes will have the same type yeah so this is when you start having heterozygous you start getting more variation so let's let me show you that so here they're asking you what happened when you have not one but all of them all of them um heterozygous so let's start first with only one only one uh, gene or only one uh, uh, centromere here you have one type of centromere and the other type of centromere they go through meiosis and here you get again one two three and four and here you will get two type uh, of combinations so two type of centromeres yeah so one will be capital and the other one will be lowercase and when you repeat this six times uh, you will get more variation so now i'm going to explain uh, what happened with three genes instead of having one or two i'm going to explain uh, uh, with three genes and let's forget about this for a second yeah do not make it more complicated so here one way that maybe you remember that we did in genetic revolution it was making these trees yeah here they will give you not only the numbers but they will give you the type of gametes or in this case the type of centromeres so remember you just have to make a tree with each one of the combinations so here is a B capital, B lowercase, C capital, C lowercase, and each branch will be will do in a repetitive way. And for example, if you want to get the first one, this you go and take one branch, so it is one A, B, and C, and you get A B C capital. If you on the second option, I will have it in blue. So it will be again a 
B and then you go C and you get this A, B, C and the second one is lowercase and you can continue with all of them in the same way and you will get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 options yeah and these 8 options or 8 combinations is the type of information they are asking you they are not asking you for this information yeah these are very useful if you know to know the what type of gametes you get yeah like what type of in this case centromeres you get however they're asking you is for the number for the number so this information is useless for you what you need is just this number and for this number it's very easy you just use a formula and this formula is so here you have number of genes mm -hmm. and i wonder you tell me how many genes do you see there in this case only we have three a b and c mm -hmm. a b and c and what are the types uh, the types of centromeres or in our case it will be alleles so you will get two yeah so that is capital and okay so that it will be the dominant and recessive yeah so what you will do is types and you raise that to the power of three that is the number of genes and you get again eight yeah now if we have the sixth one here mm -hmm. so it will be two raised to have again two types raised to the power of six and this is 64 um that is that is a uh, pretty easy so instead of making all these long trees or make uh, uh using those tools you can apply this formula that is just a variation of the multiplication rule that we have been using so here again each one of these events is is uh, is independent and this is why you can make those branches and you just multiply this multiple times yeah, six time and you will get 64 okay so the probability of having this uh, six uh, uh, centromeres that are have that are uh, oh, in these heterozygous genes are like that so pretty easy now let's move to the se uh, second question that is the probability of a gamut that what happened with this gamut that have centromeres that have capital letters so they're asking you about what is the probability of getting this one and this one and this one so that one is pretty easy too again there's no interaction between genes so you just have to apply the multiplication rule so again you have a 50 percent chance here of making a gamut and a 50 percent chance of making the other type of gamut in this case is this is the recessive in this case this is the uh, dominant and this uh, here and and it's like flipping a coin 50 a 50 percent chance again remember this is how you make the gametes what you have there here on the top oh and here is also the gametes here um and so again each one of these events are independent so due to the probability of getting uh, six different centromeres it will be only you're only asking for these ones so you repeat that six times first with the a then with the b then with the c and so on uh, so is the probabilities is a uh, zero uh, is a uh, one out of two raised to the power of six so again varies and if you have any question or any doubt just let me know and i hope that everything was very clear